This video is sponsored by Global Ordnance. Okay, let's be honest. Who remembers back in the day when people would joke about Glock making a 1911? Remember all those memes and posts and things like that? Well, it didn't really turn out like that. It turned out like this. And this is the Stealth Arms Platypus. And it is one badass shooting gun. Not to mention it's a 1911 double stack, which feels good, has that great trigger. But what I love about it is it takes these cheap, reliable, dependable, readily available Glock magazines. Stand by. I first heard about this after SHOT Show 2023, and unfortunately, I missed out. I didn't get to go play with it at SHOT Show, but it was definitely, like, shame on me because it was pretty awesome. And the buzz going around about a 1911 that takes Glock magazines is kind of revolutionary. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, what's the big deal? Dude, we all have a ton of these magazines. Like, I have a lot of them, and several people I talk to have a lot of them. Plus, they're cheap, they work, you can get extensions and all sorts of stuff. Like, this is arguably one of the best handgun magazines on the market, right? So if we could get one of the best handgun platforms on the market to take that, I think that is really cool. Now, when I got to finally put my hands on one of these at the NRA show, uh, that short that I published from there, I think is over like 400,000 views. So obviously there's a lot of interest in a gun like this. And rightfully so, because there's a lot of stuff going on. Now, one other thing I wanted to address is that all the comments on the platypus video were like, bro, that's not a 1911. That's not a 1911. What about this is not a 1911? 1911 grip angle, 1911 trigger, 1911 fire controls, 1911 safety, 1911 slide, 1911 barrel lockup and barrel bushing. This is a 1911 that just so happens to take Glock magazines. That's it. Like, stop arguing, end of discussion. This is a 1911, just as much as any other 1911, except for it takes better magazines. Get over it. I know, two world wars, whatever. In World War III, bring this one, okay? This is a media sample. Uh, it's not mine. I, I've, I don't know if I have to keep it or whatever, but I'm not giving it back. Like, this thing is a really, really good shooter, as you saw from some of the footage before. Arguably, I think I shot my best 25-yard group with this gun. Like, I cannot believe how freaking accurate this thing is. So it is just a laser beam gun, and I'm, I'm never giving it up. We'll just go for the head box 25 yards. So what was that, five, six rounds? Yeah, something like that. Okay. So we're at the 25-yard pull there. The group, wow. I think zero shift a little bit. But I don't think I've ever shot as good at 25 yards as that five-shot group. Check this out. Six-shot group, sorry. So this one was me, but that is at 25 yards. That is crazy. That's a hell of a shooter. I think I might get one of those. I didn't want to like it as much as I did because I didn't have maybe the right expectations going into a sub $2,000 1911. I've kind of gotten soured in the past by sub $2,000 guns thinking that they're going to be all the great and they're better than so-and-so or just as good as so-and-so. And then they kind of have a bunch of MIM parts in them and they don't run very well. <laughs> Prodigy. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm coming down with a little something. But anyways, then I get this thing for under $2,000. And not only is there no MIM parts, but it runs really well. And we're going to dive into other really cool features under the hood too. So I get my sample. I shoot the snot out of it. I've been shooting it all summer. I've taken it to classes. I've taken it to matches. Uh, I've trained with it. I let a lot of other people shoot it. I'm trying to get it to choke and it doesn't. It's been absolutely rock solid, reliable, about 2,500 rounds, give or take probably closer to the 3,000. Now, the biggest question that people ask me is the grip angle. And I can assure you, I have a, a 2011 grip here and I'll line it up. 
trying to line up the trigger guard as like a reference point, but you can see it is a 1911 grip angle. Now the bottom is a little bit different because of how the magazines sit, but uh, and it's a little bit different size and shape. So let's just talk about that right off, right off the bat is the grip. And it does have their chainsaw texture, which I do wish was a little bit more aggressive. I'm not gonna lie, I like really aggressive grips. I get stuff stippled, I get the most aggressive grip I can. So if I did have one complaint, it would be that I want a more aggressive grip and they're working on that. Texture does wrap around 360 degrees and the mainspring housing also matches, which is really nice. And the parts are fit really well. Like it's really tough to see, but they're actually the seam between the mainspring housing and the grip. The grip and frame are all machined together out of one big chunk of 7075. Now the grip is a little shorter because the magazines are different. And a lot of people are gonna ask um, about that. But one other thing before we compare the magazines is even though the grip angle is the same, the grip does feel a little different than like a 2011 grip. If a 2011 grip was more oval shaped, this is kind of more like a rectangle with more rounded corners, if you will, just because of the magazine geometry of having to make the angle, having to take the shape of the magazine, that kind of thing. So uh, these are very comfortable. I love these grips and I love the grip angle. This is still a very comfortable gun. It's just a little different. It's not better, it's not worse. It's just a little bit different with kind of this flat surface here and then it kind of rounds and tapers, if you will. So I I don't have any complaints about the ergonomics. It's just something that I noticed picking it up and something that people do notice picking it up. Now, why is the grip shorter? Well, that's because the magazines between a Glock and a double stack magazine, if we kind of compare them here, you can see that the double stack magazine is a little bit taller and these are both 17 round magazines. And I'm trying to compare a common point of where they fit because the Glock magazine is at a different angle than obviously a 1911 or a 2011 style mag. So it's not, I get it, it's not quite apples to apples, but there you can see that the 1911 or double, uh, double stack 2011 magazine is a little bit taller. So therefore that grip is going to be a little bit shorter on the stealth versus like a 2011. So it's not much, but you can see how I think for scale, if I get really high up on the grip, uh, on a 2011 grip, I have a little bit of room between the magwell and my pinky, and I don't quite have as much on the platypus. I'm getting right to the magwell, but it's still a very comfortable grip. But So you can see there that the 2011 grip is just a little bit longer, so something to take note, uh, which a lot of people really like the more compact 2011s anyway so this is kind of in the middle but it's still very comfortable and then what's nice is if you did take the magwell off it's a very low profile overall finish speaking of magwell uh, one of the questions that i had was magazine compatibility so it does ship with this nice bag here which i don't really use range bags a lot but it's it's lovely it's just a lovely bag and it comes with two magazines in the gun the manual and all that so we have the gun I was curious, how do magazines fit? Well, the Gen 5 style magazines fit just fine. No issues whatsoever. And there is even these cutouts in the magwell in case you did have to strip the magazine. Uh, it's, it's doable, but it's not quite as easy. So I'm a firm believer that if you're gonna run a magwell, you should also run extended base pads. But uh, the Gen 5 magazines fit fine. Gen 4 and previous, that's these guys right here. Uh, these guys also fit just fine. So this is the older style base pad compared to the new Gen 5 with this extended lip. Like either one fit just fine. Now, if you do have a Vickers style base pad, those will not seat. So those are a no-go. Uh, so keep that in mind. But as far as extensions go, um, there are a couple here. These are, I want to say Zevs and the Zevs fit just fine. And these are Arandondos, and the Arandondos did hang up just a little bit, so I did have to uh, just take a little bit of material off the back here, and I just did that with a, uh, a quick belt sand, and just took a little bit there. I can see where it was rubbing in order to get them to seat. Uh, and I still love these base pads. I know they're older and not as cool anymore, but they're super solid, and just removing a little bit of the material makes them function just fine. So I ran a lot of rounds with this, so. Just something to talk about when it comes to that. Back to the grip, like I said, it's all machined one piece out of aluminum, and it's cool because it has a full length dust cover as an option. You can get a shorter option as well. 
Moving up to the slide, we do have a stainless slide. There's a ton of different cutouts available. We'll talk about the website here in just a sec. But this particular one is kind of their dual cut. It has front serrations, a window, rear serrations, and then it does have a bushing barrel. And you can get these finished in either raw, like I have here, raw stainless, or you can get nitride, all that kind of stuff. They're optic cut. I was actually one of the first to get the RMR cut. So when he sent this gun to me, he also wanted me to test it with a bunch of different optics. And one of the things, as you know, here with the RMR HD is the overhang is a little bit different than the SRO. If you haven't seen my RMR HD video, you can check it out. I'll have a link in the description. Pretty solid dang optic. Now, I was able to give him some feedback on where it needs to go, and he wasn't given the blueprints from Trigicon, so he was really appreciative of that. Once I measured and gave him things, I could send it back. He made adjustments, he sent it back to me so I'd have the gun for a class, and he was just super awesome to work with. Customer service and responsiveness was really cool, and plus, being able to get to know him a little bit more and talk to him about some of the passion that goes into this, and what he wants to do, and some of the stuff that's in the works that I can't talk about, it's really cool. Like, he's doing a lot of really cool things. All right, back to the gun. Rear sight. This is a really great way to do a rear sight. It comes in different heights, and basically all it is is a little piece right here that secures with a screw, and I put a little thread locker on mine. In the event that your dot were to fail, you do have a nice backup sight that integrates with either a fiber optic or a white dot front sight, but then you can see that the rear sight is serrated, and again, it comes with different heights, so if you're running a big window, whatever. I thought that was a really good way to do the optic cut and rear sight. Uh, other thing about we got this profile is you can see that the optic cut does kind of flare the whole width of the slide out a little bit to support the bottom of the RMR. And you can see that it basically comes almost to the full width of the optic of the RMR HD here. So it kind of flares out, we have serrations, and then it flares back in forward. And it allows a nice low mounting of the RMR HD or an SRO or any RMR pattern optic. Now here's what's really cool about Stealth Arms. And I I'm giddy because I have never seen a website as good as theirs. And I mean that. Out of all of the gun builder, gun configurators on the internet, they have the best I have ever seen. So literally, you go there, you do the build a platypus, and you go through every stinking option. Tactical versus traditional, round trigger guard, square trigger guard, full length dust cover, not government, you know, commander. And then you get to pick your grip options, your slide options, your optic cuts. But then what's crazy is that you go to the finishes and that's where you can select like nitrate on your barrel and things like that, which uh, was kind of hidden when I was looking at it. So in hindsight, I would have done that. But that's where you can also start to select your finishes. So if you wanted to have a gray gun with green this and purple polka dot, no, okay, maybe not polka dot, but if you wanted to have a gray gun with green here and pink there, you can do it. If you wanted to have a gun with orange here and gray there, you can do it. If you wanted to have a gun with green here and orange there, you can do it. And every little detail, is crazy how customizable you can do it. And you can see it in real time. You can zoom, you can spin. It is just the coolest experience I've ever seen for a gun configuration or a builder in any way, shape or form. And I asked him, I was like, who are your web developers? Cause I want to steal them. He wouldn't tell me. So they're onto something. That website is dang cool. I love it. They did an A plus job. Nobody in the industry is doing that. I don't care what level of company, nobody in the industry has a website like that. And you can get your own custom platypus or you can get several platypus. And then you, would you have platypi? Is it platypi? Now, when it comes to ammunition that I ran through the Platypus, I ran through my standard testing lot, which is a bunch of full metal jacket, as well as some hollow point stuff, mainly HST, uh, some Hornaday, and I think I had some Gold Dot G2 type stuff just for kind of testing and it functioned fine. But this is where Global Ordnance really came in clutch for me is that they provide all the ammunition on my channel. Brands that you know and love, as well as some of the import stuff, including Sterling Steel, which I know, who would have think I would be shooting steel ammo, but I do, and I love it. It's reliable, it's accurate, and it's really good priced. Or we have Bellum or Ingman 9mm ammo that's available by the case. And what's really cool is that if you use code GT Ammo, you get free shipping on all orders over 200, whether you buy it by the box or by the case. As long as it's over 200, you get free shipping. Use my link in the description to learn more and use code GT Ammo. Again, huge thanks to Global Ordnance. Without their support of ammunition, I can't make content like this. Now, keep in mind, I have not cleaned this in about those 2,500 rounds, so you'll see it dirty. And it's basically shoot, lube, shoot, lube, shoot, lube. But you know what? 
that's how I like to shoot my guns. So if the thing doesn't run, I don't care about it, right? Now, what's cool is most of the parts are 1911. However, there were some parts that they had to do on their own. Obviously, the grip and the frame, uh, they had to do their own mag release. But a lot of the parts are still 1911 interchangeable. They uh, can provide more information about that. But like the fire controls and things like that, um, you know, it's all... All 1911. Now, here's what's really cool is that you look on the inside of this gun, and if you really want me to do a deep dive teardown, I can do that in a separate video. But all of the fire control parts, the hammer, sear, disconnector, safety, ejector, are all machined. There's no MIM parts for a sub $2,000 gun. Taking a look at the barrel, and this is really the first time I've taken it apart in a while, so it'll be kind of interesting to see what the wear and everything looks like. But uh, as far as the lugs and contact points on the barrel, uh, everything looks really good. I don't see any obvious burrs or damage or anything like that. That tells me that it's locking up nicely to the slide. And the frame fit looks good too. And this is a, a Clark Para style barrel stop on the lug there. How the barrel interfaces with the frame and we get that nice tang indicating that the barrel is stopping on the frame and not putting stress on the link. That radius that's in here that matches the radius here that's nice. So there's a lot of other companies that use different style of barrels and one could argue, you know, one's better than the other, but there's a lot of custom smiths that really do like the Clark Paris style. So really nice to see, especially on a gun like this, you usually don't see that on guns that um, are, you know, are a lot more money. So really good there. As far as the fit between the link and the barrel, uh, even when you're putting pressure on it, I I'm able to move this freely so it's not binding or anything like that. And then taking a close look at the link, I just have a little bit of the finish wear here, but otherwise the link looks really good and I'm not seeing, you know, any flat spots or anything like it, that indicating, uh, you know, any damage or wear or anything. So that's looking all right. Polished feed ramp after I clean it. So barrel looks good. And as far as the fit, you know, to the bushing, to the slide, it feels great. It feels really nice. Like there's some guns that I see out there. I mean, yeah, it's, that's a nice fit. Uh, it's nice and snug. So that probably helps answer why these have been so accurate for me is that the fit of everything just feels really good. So that's what's kind of going on under the hood. Uh, I love what I'm seeing. And I, I love it when I see quality parts that are fit well together. I don't see a lot of atrocious wear. Now let's, there's one more thing I do want to show you on the slide. And that is this cut right here, that's called a marvel cut. And basically what this angled cut does is it allows when the slide is cycling to compress the disconnector, which is this little, uh, this little bumpy thing right there. And basically when the slide moves forward, it compresses it down rather than have to kind of like push it down. Uh, whereas this cut offers just a little bit more of that kind of smooth cycling. So to see a gun that has a marvel cut, uh, for under $2,000 is pretty crazy. Normally you send that off to a gunsmith to have done, or it's done on custom guns. So to have it done on a production gun, it's, it's pretty cool. So that's the Platypus, a sub $2,000 gun that's reliable, that is super accurate, that shoots really well, and it takes readily available Glock pattern magazines. So that's the Platypus. I am really impressed. I love the gun. I like how it shoots. It's durable. It's reliable. I've been very happy with it. Uh, it's a pretty solid review for me. So hopefully this helps you. You can check them out. You can order them from stocking dealers. I know Rainier can't keep them in stock fast enough. As soon as they get them, they're gone, but sign up for back in stock alerts, or you can order them on their website like we talked about earlier, which is a pretty dang cool experience as well. If you guys liked the video, like, share, subscribe. If you want to support it, check out us Patreon, all that good stuff. We'd appreciate it. If you have any questions about this or anything firearms related, go ahead and post a comment or better yet, send your question to the email address shown on the screen. That is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. And at the end of the month, we have a live stream where we answer your questions. Plus we also then publish it wherever you get your podcasts. So that's the QA. I answer your questions live at the end of every month. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.